What's up everyone? So today we're doing paint texturing and going over some primer and the types of paints that are available to you and why I chose the paint type that I chose. For the paint color, we have Grink Villa Interior Ultra Satin Ultra White Base A. And this is for um, the bedrooms and the back bathroom, uh, the washer room. Then we have over here, we got extra white interior Valspar Reserve Satin Ultra White. And this is um, the one coat stuff, the expensive reserve. And this is for all the trims and the door gems. And then we have over here, Stone Isle Interior Ultra Satin Ultra Base White A. And then we have the ceiling paint. This is a dead flat paint and primer. And this is for all the ceilings. Okay, let me show you something very trippy. So this is a flat white. It's a ceiling white. So basically it's that white. So that way it shows no shadow. Accidentally got this gray paint here. So this gray paint on the ceiling. And we went over it. Looks gray. Like if it doesn't cover it. Same thing over there. It's kind of a weird um, tone, but it's better than this direct gray. Kind of blends in a little bit, but still it's a dark patch. The same white here, and we bring it up into this lighting here. It's weird because it's gonna look gray. So it looks white right there. You got gray right here, right? And as you go up, looks like it blends in. It looks like a gray as well. And it's all because of this white light. And that's how uh, it's a ceiling flat, dead flat white. So if you look in this corner where it's close to it, not on uh, 90 degree walls, you look at it where it's in the crotch, it looks white. So the ceiling is that paint right there. And it looks nothing like that with the way this light's reflecting on this gray. So it's super weird the way this thing's set up. And then for all of you that remember Radio Shack, it's old school alarm. Same thing over here. Crazy. Crazy the way light uh, changes things and maybe like this door color uh, reflecting on the ceiling along with this cream color. Maybe it blends everything in. And then if you look at the edges, they look even darker than the ceiling. And that's where I went along with my paintbrush, which is super crazy because I don't see that in person the uh, brush strokes. All I see is the dark color to the lighter color and it's all the same color. So I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it's the brush strokes throwing it off or changing it up. When dealing with colors, um, make sure you bring the swatches home with you. Don't look at them at the store because they're gonna change color with your lighting and your environment. I prefer the single swatches versus the three swatches or the tri swatches just because um the the nice thing about the tri swatches is it kind of gives you complementary colors so stuff that works with uh each other but when you go and you have a few of these and you put them on the wall certain ones look purple certain ones look green and it's all over the place um but when you fold them like this it changes the color drastically so if you do get these and you don't get the singles that's fine just make sure you fold them so that way your eyes don't uh, dilate to you know comparing all three colors to the one that you're looking at so after dealing with the crappy rollers i went out and searched for an uh, like to see what the professional rollers look like if you were to buy them separately see if they had anything that's different 
And I found this one. It's all aluminum here, and which is nice because it lightens it up. But one thing that intrigued me is, as you can see in here, there's only a few threads. I don't know if you could see that. There's only a few threads at the bottom, none on the sides, and some on top. I'm hoping these threads don't crack when I tighten it. But one thing that was intriguing is if you bought the Purdy uh, Quick Adjust uh, stick instead of the Wooster, or instead of any screwing type, they got a notch in here. So let me see if I could get that. So if you look right past that first thread right there, you see that yellow patch? That's actually a, a notch or indentation cutaway, okay? And if you were to buy the Purdy uh, Quick Adjust one, the one that has threads, but it has like this little nub sticking up, it actually indexes right into that little notch in there. And that's awesome because when you're painting, if you have a threaded one, when you're painting and you're pushing on it, it and you're, you're like trying to drive the paint roller into the wall, it tends to want to loosen up. Okay, if you're not applying pressure to tighten it. The quick detach version that Purdy comes out with is pretty cool because the way it's designed is you just slide it in there and it clips in. That's it. And then if you want to quickly unattach it, you don't have to sit there and unscrew your roller flinging paint all over the place. You just push the button and this detaches and you could get uh, up and close and personal with whatever it is you need to paint and uh, roll it on and then clip it back on. I like that design. That's awesome. I didn't know about that. Um, so definitely look into that. If you're deciding to buy rollers and a stick, look, if you're not looking to get into just the threaded version and you want something quick disconnect, look into that pretty one and uh, buy a separate roller like this. Don't buy the kits because they're cheap. Okay, like I said, the threads internally on Minecraft internal threads on the roller itself on those $25 uh, bargain uh, kits garbage okay unless you're using them by hand um, maybe buy those just to acquire a brush or two and two rollers that they come with and do it by hand uh, but if you're using an extension pole invest in something a little bit better when you paint you're gonna want plastic bag or this uh, paint uh, paper down they sell it in like 150 foot rolls you could get the plastic bag one that's just like this and it keeps it from getting on your floor as you can see some of it splatters towards us when we're painting uh, when you're rolling it it flicks towards you so keep that in mind this is a uh, an example of when you need to roll it on in two layers so that was the first layer and then this is the second layer to kind of hide that darker color that's going to bleed through unless you primer it um, with some thick primer that covers up dark colors but yeah we didn't want to do that we only had one wall to deal with like that so we just paint it over it so to do this whole wall here and this wall and of course the double coat here it took about half a gallon we used the other half a gallon in the bathroom to finish up that entire bathroom this is a lot larger as far as the wall size. Um, so instead of nine foot like the bathroom, this is probably closer to 12 foot um, or maybe a little bit bigger. So that's why it was only able to do two walls. And then plus this one needed two coats uh, heavily applied just to cover up that back uh, color. So the nice thing about having this thick texture is nice because if you have any holes, you could put some spackle on it smooth it out like that sand it down a little bit and it kind of blends in with the whole you know um design aspect of it so as you can see you can see it here when you look at it on like straight head on you know it blends in and then when you go over to this area this is not the color this is a color before that it was painted white when you go over to this area you see you don't really see anything so this is the uh, texture that we're going to run. It's called Westpac uh, Materials Ready Tex Premix Spray Texture. Okay, quick and easy set. So basically what you need to do is whip this up really good. Make it like uh, 
not thick, it needs to be thin. Um, so it's almost like a liquid state. Uh, so mix this up really good, preferably with a drill and uh, one of those mixers. And then uh, put that in a, a texture gun. Here's the texture gun we're gonna use. Uh, it's a cheap uh, Harbor Freight style one, Central Pneumatic. Gotta clean it all out, but basically you just pour it in there and then it's gonna spit the texture. And as it's spitting it, you know, you could go over it multiple times. I recommend probably making one pass like this, coming back over and then making another pass after you do the whole wall. Say you spit it on all the wall and you're wanting to add more texture, then go about adding more texture over the texture that you put on there. But make sure you do the whole wall just so that way you can see how uh, the areas that you need to recoat if for whatever reason it's a little thin in one area. So after cleaning all the walls with a wet rag, um, you wanna tape off the corners all the way around so when you texture, it doesn't get on the roof. And then you wanna tape off any other things that you don't want paint to get on. And then use this paper also laid on the floor so that way when you spray it, it doesn't get on your tile or your carpet or what have you. Just put tape around the areas that you need taped off and then now you could spray it. Okay, so here's the consistency that we need to have. As you can see, when I'm shaking it back and forth, it could just flow easy, evenly. It's almost equivalent to a milkshake. Uh, if for whatever reason yours is lumpy and thick, um, use a paint stir on a drill and uh, just get it frothy until it turns into almost like a watery milkshake, not too thick and not too thin. If for whatever reason it is too thick, you can always add water uh, to it and uh, mix it up until you get a good consistency. So as you can see, it flows pretty easily in here. It's pretty heavy after you do fill it up. So um, I recommend filling up about half, um, about half a container of this to the bottom of this edge right here and just cause it gets heavy. And then uh, you want a regulator or something on the bottom so you can regulate airflow and also um, so that way it's easily regulated at the gun. So a ball valve with maybe a pressure gauge or a regulator that you could air up and air down uh, up to you. And then this is supposed to spit uh, the texture onto the wall. And if for whatever reason you don't like the graininess of this texture, you could always flatten it out with the spatula um, or putty knife or whatever you have, just knock off the edges once it starts firming up on the wall and then it'll give you a smeared finish instead of a, a rocky finish. So let me go spit this on the wall and see what it um, does. It's gonna be hard for me to record and do this at the same time since I'm holding it with one hand as well as um, my camera with the other hand. So. Let me spit this on the wall real quick. So then when you come into this room, uh, like I said, everything's been painted in this room. And the new texture that I put, you can see is this rougher stuff. And then the old texture is this larger stuff. It blended in really well. It looks better in person than it does in camera. Um, just because the camera, uh, the light, the way it reflects to the human eye versus the camera camera picks up different shadows differently than your eye. Um, so it's gonna look splotchy, but in real life, it doesn't look like that at all. Um, it looks really nice. And then, like I said, I took the sand sander and then knocked down those edges just so we get a flatter finish instead of a rough texture. So it doesn't like cake on any grease and debris and stuff like that, or like dust can't really sit on it, it's smoother, so it just kind of falls off easier to wipe off and all that stuff, okay? But yeah, th this whole room took only one coat of paint. The only one that absorbed a little bit more was this bottom section, because it was uh, raw sheetrock, so it absorbed a little bit more. Spots like this little area here are not a shadow, 
and then behind this pipe, I need to hand brush that stuff. But this whole unit took about half a gallon as well. So the smell that this paint puts off, it almost smells like it has a lacquer uh, scent to it. So yeah, be careful with that. I don't know exactly what it has in it, but it does smell a little bit potent. Um, I wasn't aware of that. I thought it wouldn't smell that bad. So whatever, whatever additives that they put in their paint, Felspar, um, yeah, it has a strong odor. But one thing I noticed after painting this, it doesn't smell like paint itself. So I know like bare paint and stuff I've used in the past. I don't know if it's the type of paint because it's latex versus oil base. But for whatever reason, um, I usually use bare paint, this time Valspar, but the bare paint smells like paint afterwards and it just lingers. This one it has a strong odor when you're applying it, but once it dries, I can't even smell the paint smell for whatever reason. So that's a good thing because, you know, no one likes to live in a home while it smells like fresh paint, you know, it kind of sucks, okay? And it dries really fast. So this was probably about an hour of setting, so I could touch it and it's already dry. So that's a super nice touch as well. But keep in mind, if you decide you don't want to texture, uh, the reason why I did texture was to transition from textured walls that were already done to my smooth wall here. Um, Cause if I didn't texture it, it would have a texture here and a super smooth wall here. You'll see it. And then also the transitions between textured and smooth, uh, the sheetrock was a little bit different. So having that texture kind of blends in both aspects of it and um, it also reflects light a little bit different in the room so you might like that better um, just so you don't have a super shiny room because the wall is smooth the texture kind of off puts that sh super shine uh, on a wall in my opinion from what i'm gathering now it gives it more of a matte finish even though it has a shiny um, you know surface finish where you can wipe it off just keep in mind, if it's in a location where it accumulates a lot of dust and stuff, you might not want to texture the wall just because you don't want it to stick to that texture. So before we paint this room here, uh, we're going to texture it just to blend in all this stuff. So you're going to need a compressor, a texture gun, and, a, um, and the texture you choose to go with. And then you spray this, let it dry. Uh, I recommend probably primering in it just so it doesn't absorb any of your good paint or expensive paint and then go over and paint it. So as you can see in the, this room, uh, like I was saying, this was supposed to be a tannish color, a lighter tan, and it looks white in here. But when you compare it to the white, you can see that it has some tan in it, but it hasn't retained the same color as the swatch. Um, so go figure. <laughs> It looks white, but it is tan. You can see the two differences in shades. So this is how the washroom turned out. Uh, what the washer, the toilet, the sink. This is going to be replaced with the cabinet setup. Um, the water heater. As you can see, this is the tan color with the white. The white wall. That's going to get fixed. But this is what it turned out like after everything was in. As you can see, I put some of the trim in. It made everything a lot more modern by just adding this trim. So if you don't have new trim, I definitely recommend one with the fancy design and taller border. And it will change the appearance of everything you have. But you could definitely see the difference in color off of this. Not necessarily from this roof because this still needs to be changed out as well as the lighting. So after painting everything, uh, here's one prime example of the finished product this is the gray it has a blue tint to it just because you know i have the white curtains white ceiling um, blue painting here blue couches uh, that being said it kind of gives a blue vibe to it but it also has a grayish white tint to it as well but compared to the the white up on the ceiling and here you could definitely see the color difference in this room and the natural lighting that's coming in from this window. Um, it changes the environmental color on the walls, okay? 
as we recall this was a darker gray but you know spread out through a large area it does look a lot lighter than what it uh, was in the swatch and what the little section is that I painted to display the color so that's going to complete today's video on the painting. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future, consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.